At one point, we all knew of the USS Titan, and that was the ship that newly promoted Captain William T. Riker would command. However, since then, the lineage of the Titan under the United Federation of Planets has expanded significantly. Well, yes, we have a brand new Neo Constitution class USS Titan A in Star Trek Picard Season 3, which is also now the USS Enterprise G, angry Picard emoji here, we also have the introduction of the first USS Titan, or at least one of the very first. The Strangley Lar class USS Titan NCC-1777 was the 23rd century version of the Titan. Launched in 2290, the Titan was under the command of Vulcan Captain Savak, who was a successful Starfleet officer and one of Mr. Spock's best students. So let's take a look in this video about what we know of this Titan and its legacy. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get into it. This week we've given Lieutenant Commander Adam the day off and I'm here to walk you through this video. Before we warp into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself, Adam, Dom and the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. But as always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. My big question to you today is, what ship should we talk about next? Get commenting. Okay, engage. First up, we do have to mention that there may be another USS Titan before Savix Titan. This one was seen in the conference room of Riker's lunar class USS Titan NCC 80102 in around 2380. The model looks similar to the Lochner class starship, and really, that's all we know. It might not even be called Titan. There are other models in the conference room, so whether these are just previous USS Titans or just other ships is not known. Going to the actual original USS Titan we know of, the USS Titan NCC-1777, was a Shangri-La class starship commissioned in 2290. It was launched under the command of Captain Savick. Savick was a Vulcan Starfleet officer who had proved herself throughout the 2280s as an exceptional officer serving aboard both the USS Enterprise and then the USS Grissom. Savick saw a meteoric rise in rank during the 2280s, starting out as a Starfleet cadet in 2285 aboard the USS Enterprise while it was a training ship and was mentored by Captain Spock. This meant that she promoted up six ranks in five years, which was presumably a record at the time, with Kirk a prior record holder of youngest Starfleet captain taking roughly 13 years. During the Khan incident in 2285, Savick would be the navigator of the USS Enterprise. When the ship's training cruise mission was suspended to deal with an incident involving the regular one science station and the Genesis device, which was a super weapon which had the capability to essentially destroy life on a planetary scale, no, not the Death Star. During this mission, Savick would gain first-hand experience working with Starfleet legends such as Admiral James T. Kirk and Captain Spark, learning how he dealt with the Kobayashi Maru situation, no-win scenarios the Starfleet ships and commanding officers might get themselves into. How? I reprogrammed the simulation so it was possible to rescue the ship. What? He cheated. I changed the conditions of the test. After the Genesis incident, Savick would be promoted to Lieutenant Junior Grade and transferred to the USS Grissom to study the newly born Genesis planet, created by the Genesis device in the Mutara Nebula. Now, the Grissom would be destroyed by a Klingon bird of prey, commanded by the Klingon Captain Kruj, who desired the Genesis device as a weapon. Savick, accompanied by Admiral Kirk's son, David Marcus, would be spared the fate of a Grissom, as they would be planet-side after locating the torpedo casing of a recently deceased Captain Spock, who, through the Genesis planet, would be reborn. Savick would survive this instant too, thanks to David Marcus, who would sacrifice himself in front of a Klingon's blade to save her. Now, Savick would go with the Enterprise crew and the newly reborn Spock aboard the stolen bird of prey, now dubbed the HMS Bounty. They'd arrive on Vulcan, where the newly resurrected Spock would be reunited with his Vulcan catcher, aka his soul. Savick would remain on Vulcan while the Enterprise crew and Spock would return to Earth for their crimes of stealing the Enterprise, and sabotage of the Excelsior to save Savick and Spock from the Genesis planet. Between this event, Savick would become captain of the USS Titan. We do not know what Savick was up to, which warranted such a quick rise through the ranks. She would have possibly been first officer of a starship at some point, maybe even taken temporary command of a ship which would explain the fast rise in ranks. That or she was just exceptional and got promotions quickly for her service. Now I believe that Savick may have worked on the USS Excelsior under Captain Sulu in some capacity. 
so you'll assume captaincy of the Excelsior in 2287. So Savick may have been on the Excelsior for three years before getting her own captaincy of the Titan in 2290. There is a reason why Savick may have been on the Excelsior, perhaps even as first officer for three years, which you'll find out later. In 2290, Savick would be made captain of the USS Titan, NCC-1777, that's getting a mouthful now. We know only the few missions that the Titan was involved with. It seems in 2290, Starfleet was also looking for a new starship to assume the mantle of the Starfleet flagship. This would really usually fall to a ship named Enterprise. The USS Enterprise A was set to be retired soon, and Captain Sulu recommended that the newly launched USS Titan, under the captaincy of Savak, should be made flagship. This recommendation by Sulu is why we think Savak may have served on the Excelsior under Sulu. This was accepted by Starfleet, and thus the Titan was the new flagship of the fleet. It is said that as a flagship of the fleet, the Titan was instrumental in maintaining frontier stability with the Klingon Empire, before the Kittimer Accords were signed in 2293. We know the Titan had engaged in multiple encounters with the Klingon Empire, including the Exoport takeover. Exoport seemed to be the main location of Starfleet security, so this incident possibly was the Klingons trying to take out Starfleet security and take over Exoport. The reason why we think Exoport is the same location as Starfleet Security is in 2401, the SS Elios fled to Exoport after being attacked by unknown enemies at a recent location. This ship at the time was under the command of Dr. Beverly Crusher, who would have been looking for Starfleet for some help. When they arrived at Exoport, three guys in Starfleet uniforms tried to capture a son of Dr. Crusher, Jack Crusher, which does seem to suggest that Exoport had some Starfleet presence, at least in the 2400s. Then again, we do know that at this point in time, some Starfleet officers were changelings. So, who knows. The second time Exoport was mentioned was also in 2401, when Commander Raphael Musica and Captain Worf, son of Moog, had travelled to Exoport to monitor Starfleet security, to see if they could locate their captured friend and ally, William Riker. But this was over a century after the original Titan would have dealt with the Exoport takeover, so it could have become a location for Starfleet security later down the line. Another mission the USS Titan was involved with was the Horizon Conley Rescue, which seemingly also involved the Klingon Empire. Horizon Conley could be a colony related to the transport ship, the ECS Horizon, which was where notable Starfleet pilot, Ensign Travis Mayweather, was born. Or it's just a colony called Horizon, either or works. In 2293, the USS Enterprise B was launched, and would reassume a role of flagship like all ships named Enterprise. What happened to the USS Titan after that is not known, though there are plenty of stories to tell. Titan series, anyone? The legacy of the USS Titan would continue on in an interesting way. The ship itself wouldn't be considered for a letter suffix in future iterations, which was common for Starfleet. The next vessel in the legacy was the Lunar Class USS Titan NCC-80102, captained by William T. Riker, following his time on the USS Enterprise-D and the Enterprise-E. Riker would come to captain the USS Titan after the Shinzon incident in 2379, and later be seen dealing with the Packlet incident of the 2380s, serving with his wife, Commander Deanna Troy, and well-known Starfleet officer, Bradwood Boimler, for a time. As a tradition of ships that continue on the name of a previous ship, a component of Savick's USS Titan would be installed on the new Lunar class USS Titan. Captain Riker and Troy would have a child called Thaddeus Riker aboard the Titan in 2381, However, they would leave the USS Titan in 2391 and were tired of a planet Nepenthe after their son was diagnosed with an uncurable syndrome. According to Captain Liam Shaw, he will presumably have taken command of the USS Titan in the year 2396, so someone else would have had been the captain of the Titan between 2391 and 2396. The ship would have been damaged in 2396 and require refit. This is where the legacy of the Titan starts to get a little bit interesting. During the refit of the ship, it would be changed into a Constitution 3 class starship. Essentially, this would not just be a refit, but an entire new ship built, while using components from a Lunar class starship, such as the nacelle controls and possibly the computer system. The Constitution 3 class visually looked like a Shangri La class, however, it was much bigger in size. This was essentially done to both honor Riker's Titan and Samix Titan as well. This new ship would also have models of both Savick's Titan and Riker's Titan in its observation lounge on Deck 1. With the legacy of both Riker and Savick under the Titan's name, the ship would join a select few starships to be honoured with a letter suffix, with a newly constructed ship being the USS Titan NCC-80102-A. The registry was Riker's Titan, the internals were Riker's Titan, but the exterior was notably Savick's Titan. 
Another way Savick's USS Titan was celebrated was that one of the Type 13 shuttles aboard the USS Titan A was named Savick. Though, unfortunately, this shuttle would be blown up by the Shrike in 2401. Oh well. Though, that would seemingly be the end of the Titan legacy, at least for now. In 2401, under the command of Captain Liam Shaw and then the command of now Captain Seven of Nine, the ship would uncover a conspiracy to destroy Starfleet by an alliance of rogue changelings and the Borg Queen. Alongside the newly reconstructed Galaxy-class USS Enterprise D, we've done a video on that by the way, the two ships would help defend Starfleet and the Federation, and defeat this old new threat. With this, the USS Titan A would be rechristened as the USS Enterprise G, after the Enterprise F was decommissioned by Starfleet. What happened to a Titan name is unknown. Would another ship take up the name USS Titan? Would it be the USS Titan B or the A again? Or simply just the USS Titan? Who knows where Captain Savak, Captain Riker and Captain Shaw's legacy would go into the future. Hopefully one day we get a new USS Titan, as I know some Star Trek fans are not super keen on the legacy of the Titan being erased away and covered with the Enterprise. What do you think of that topic? I know it's a debatable one, but get commenting down below. What do you think of the original Shangri-La class USS Titan under the command of Captain Savak? Let us know in the comments. Would you like to see more adventures of this ship? Perhaps a few comic book stories or maybe an entire novel. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Jack, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper my friends. Goodbye.